ticks. Many of these blood-sucking arachnids can carry the tick-borne encephalitis or TBE virus, which can cause encephalitis and meningitis in humans. TBE has already spread across Europe. The red zones on this map show the high-risk areas that today have numerous cases per year. Scientists predict that, due to global warming, these high-risk areas will spread rapidly in the course of the next few years. Ticks are the transmitters of these dangerous viruses. One single bite can cause infection. But what are the survival strategies that ticks use? And how can the viruses spread so successfully? Meadows and woodlands, especially shaded, cool areas near the ground, are where the parasites tend to settle. After hatching, the tiny larvae will find the necessary shelter here in order to avoid drying out. For their first blood meal, they will depend on small mammals to pick them up by brushing against them in passing. This six-legged larva has found an area of very soft skin near the mouse's eye. Here it can easily find its host's bloodstream. If the mouse has already been infected with the TBE virus due to a previous tick bite, the virus can now pass on to the larva, which in turn will then become the pathogenic agent. At the end of this first blood meal, the larva will fall off its host. On the ground, the next weeks will see the tick larva's first metamorphosis into a so-called nymph. After that, it will shed its old skin and its transparent body, and an extra pair of legs will appear. After only a few days, the arachnid's chitin shell and eight legs will have hardened. As with the larvae, the nymphs too are neither male nor female. They're completely asexual. Only after a further metamorphosis can it transform into a sexually mature tick. And for that to happen, it will need a further blood meal. The nymph waits on grasses that are up to a meter high for a suitable victim to brush against it in passing. The tick nymph has no eyes, but a highly developed olfactory organ in its forelegs, which gives early warning that a blood victim is approaching. The scent and breath of the victim pass through minute pores into the bristles of this organ. Now it all depends on choosing the right moment to grab hold of the passing victim with the barbs on the forelegs. Done! The arachnid is now able to climb up easily using the double claws on its eight legs. It's getting ever closer to its goal, and soon it will have found what it's looking for, an area of thin, soft skin, ideal for inserting its feeding organ. Now the time has come. The barbed proboscis cuts further and further through the person's skin. But why doesn't the host feel this happening? The answer can be found at the other end of the proboscis, inside the tick. This is the fantastic microcosm of the tick's salivary gland. Minute glands add a whole range of substances to the saliva, which is injected directly into the wound. These include a toxin that completely anesthetizes the wound. The actual threat to human beings also comes from these glands in the form of dangerous TBE viruses. The tick has become infected with these during its first blood meal as a larva on the mouse. And now the pathogens are passed on to the new victim. Shortly after insertion, the viruses enter the jogger's blood circulation and spread throughout the entire body. Stimulated by the blood sucking, 
the viruses multiply faster and faster inside the tick, thereby steadily increasing the risk of infection. The jogger could have discovered the tick by searching his body thoroughly. After that, the tick could have been easily removed. The tick should be gripped using fine tweezers, not by the abdomen, but as close to the head as possible, and then pulled straight out in an upward direction. Ticks often have to endure years of frost and heat without a single blood meal. Until one day, chance has it that once again, a roaming mammal, such as a dog, will brush against it in passing. It's not uncommon that other bloodsuckers will already be attached to the dog's skin. Should nymphs and larvae be sucking blood in direct vicinity of each other, a single infected nymph will be enough to pass on the TBE viruses to the entire tick group. The female ticks will attract fellow ticks with special scents and thus navigate them to their sucking position along the host's skin. Therefore, it's often the case that multiple ticks can be found on one host. This male tick, too, has taken up the scent and is now on its way to a group of fellow blood-sucking ticks. Its task will be to fertilize a female. Now, after the larva and nymph stages, the sexually mature ticks can be classified as male or female for the first time. The male tick crawls onto the female, which is firmly connected to the dog's skin through its proboscis, and continues sucking blood undisturbed. Its reproductive organ is situated on the underside of its body. The male now copulates with it. Apart from sperm, it also transmits a protein, which now causes the female to feel a ravenous appetite for blood. This is one of nature's survival strategies, because only if the female is strong enough for the ensuing strenuous procedure of laying its eggs can the species' survival be assured. Thus, the female takes on great amounts of blood in the course of a number of days, and in so doing, grows to several times its original size. Finally, the female releases its proboscis out of the victim's skin and again lets itself fall. It will now search the underbrush for a number of days to find a suitable place to deposit its eggs. Although the female will cover the eggs with a protective layer, the brood will only be safe from dehydration in shady areas close to the ground. Now one of nature's impressive spectacles takes place. The female will lay two to three thousand eggs in the course of the next few days or even weeks. If the female was infected with TBE, many of these eggs will already be carrying the virus. This single moment in which the eggs are laid is what made all the other laborious phases of development necessary, from the larva to nymph up to the sexually mature tick. Thus the tick has now reached its goal. A life cycle was successfully brought to a close and a new one can now begin. Once the female has finished laying its eggs, it will soon die of exhaustion. The tick's decisive final achievement has ensured the species continued survival and in turn, it has also unknowingly made sure that TBE viruses spread even further.